just explored the beach, a part of the beach that's called the Rack Line. And I have to have been down here at Sunken Meadow two days before we filmed this, and there was quite a storm, a lot of wave action, and they cast a lot of interesting things up onto the beach, and Lane and I just walked down that beach and collected some things to share with you. Here's one of the more interesting objects that we found. It's the shed skin of a horseshoe crab. Now, Lane, it's called a horseshoe crab, but is it really a crab? No, it's not actually a crab. It looks crab-like, so that's why it's called a horseshoe crab. It's actually uh, more related to uh, animals like um, centipedes, millipedes, arachnids. Uh, arachnids. They're in that group as opposed to the, the, the crustacean group. One of the interesting things about the blood of the horseshoe crab is that unlike our blood, which is iron-based, the blood of the horseshoe crab is copper-based. And it's of great interest to scientists for that and other reasons, so these are often collected for medical research. They're often collected for uh, bait as well. And the, the uh, horseshoe crab come up to shore every spring to late spring to lay their eggs. And those eggs are very important to migrating wading birds especially the red knot, which is endangered. And a lot of the harvesting of these horseshoe crabs have reduced their numbers and their success in laying the eggs, which have been harmful for the migrating uh, uh, birds that come up the uh, eastern coast and count on those eggs to refuel as they go up to the uh, Arctic to, uh, to breed. But this is, like every uh, other uh, hard exoskeleton animal shells, um, crabs and whatnot, they, they molt, and this is the result of the molt. So, it's a very ancient animal, uh, lineage of 350 million years old. Very neat. They're especially common here on the beaches in June. That's the best time to observe them, because they're coming up on the beaches, as Lane said, to lay their eggs. What do we have here, Lane? Uh, this looks like a, a hard clam, or quahog. 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 Mercenaria mercenaria. And this is just... Uh, uh, one shell, There's, they're called bivalves because they have two shells. And uh, anything else you want to add? Well, there's this part of the shell, which you'll notice is a deep purple color, and this attracted the attention of the native peoples. In fact, they would harvest this part of the clam and ma manufacture beads from it. And these were used mainly for two purposes, basically as currency, and they considered the purple part the more valuable part of the clam. And it was also used to make belts, and the different colored beads on the belts would be used as a way of recording different events in the tribe's history, sort of like a memory prompt for a uh, tribal chieftain or whoever would have kept the records of the folklore of the tribe. So an interesting type of shell historically here on Long Island. These are your chowder clams, mm -hmm. you know, the little necks, the cherry stones, that's what this species is. Speaking of bivalves and chowder and seafood, mm -mm -mm. this is a blue mussel. Now on the sound side, the blue mussels are more common. We're going to see another type of mussel when we go into the salt marsh. But you can see, as Lane was talking about earlier, this has got two halves to the shell. So that's why it's called a bivalve. Yeah, this is the edible uh, mussel or blue mussel that's found uh, along our uh, marine shores uh, on the east coast. They attach themselves to hard surfaces with these little threads that they, they call bissel threads and they form dense colonies. As well you can see growing on the uh, on the blue uh, mussel these uh, growths which are barnacles and these barnacles also attach themselves to any hard surfaces like uh, uh, the backs of, of crabs or clams or uh, pilings or whatnot. And these uh, have a little opening which a little um, fan-like uh, structure comes out and they filter the water. What's interesting about these is these are crustaceans. Mm. These are um, uh, barnacles are related to crabs and shrimp, they're, they're crustaceans. The, uh, the mussel 
and the uh, clams are mollusk. These are the blue claw crabs, and uh, they're a very sought after crab for us humans to eat, as well as other animals. And this is the shell of one here. It's a bit faded out in color. Perhaps we'll see uh, a live one in the marsh later, but they have a much bluer color than this. And these are, again, very sought after by crabbers. In fact, I was crabbing with my son a couple weeks ago, right in the Nisiquag, and we got a bunch of crabs, and we made some crab cakes. They're tasty. It's a lot of work, though. Blaine, what's this strange-looking thing? Uh, this is actually an egg case. Huh. What do you think it's an egg case for? Some kind of cartilaginous fish. A cartilaginous fish. Very good. It's actually the egg case of a skate or mm. a ray. And they actually lay their egg eggs inside of here and the young hatch inside of this and they and they uh, start to develop and when they reach a certain age they kind of uh, break out of this case and, and swim off. And these often wash on shore and you'll see them in the rack. Skates are what I'm usually catching when I'm trying to catch stripers here in Long Island Sound. They're pretty uh, strange looking fish, that's for sure. How are they different from the stripers? They're cartilaginous fish, so they're, they're made of the same thing that my nose and ears are made out of. What about a striper? Well, they're, or a silver side, or any of those type of fish? They're another branch of fish lineage. They're the bony fish, and they have actual mm. skeletons made of bone, as opposed to sharks and rays, which have skeletons made of cartilage. All right.